Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, guys. My name is Sean Dexter. My name is Sean Dexter, and I welcome you back to the Man Growth Way Daily Analysis video. I have here with me Krisha. Krisha, say hi. What is up, you guys? <laughs> And in today's video, we'll be doing a quick analysis on Bitcoin. And the reason it's going to be quick is because, hey, there's not too much to talk about, right? Bitcoin has pretty much gone sideways over the past few days. But hey, there are a couple of things that we'd like to do a refresher on and um, perhaps a couple of other things that we forgot to discuss in yesterday's video. But hey, again, if you missed yesterday's video, I do recommend watching it, right? We talked about a lot of high level aspects of um, the charts, the monthly, the weekly, went through it all and you don't want to miss that one. Kusha, any thoughts before we start? No, I agree. So we'll link that above and also at the end of this video. Okay, so you guys can go and check out that video if you're looking for a more macro sort of uh, analysis on Bitcoin. Cool. So we're going to start again today with the monthly chart. I do think that it is imperative that we remind everybody that we have had a major major development on the monthly we have closed a monthly candle above 9350 that was last month's candle right we've come down and tested it now and bounced off it aggressively at the beginning of this week right the monday morning open just before that monday could the monday candle could open we saw that 9350 level get defended right krisha and yes. um yeah that was that was very very key right it tells us that we are looking at the right things we are eyeing the right levels very similar to that 6400 level that gave us the first clue on the month of March that, hey, you know what? We may be seeing a recovery on Bitcoin. Now, similar situation over here, we may be seeing a continuation out of that recovery. But I do want to point out that we do have resistance overhead. The first resistance I do want to talk about is number one, the Mango Ribbons Kijun sitting in at around 10,000, right? But um, to be exact, if you guys do want to be exact, it is coming in at 9,981, right? It's only after we clear that, guys, that we can say, you know what? It is becoming even clearer, clearer that um, the bull run on a macro stance is beginning to shape itself. If we scroll out over here, we're looking at BLC. So we have a lot of price data. You can see that every time Bitcoin has cleared all of the major ribbons on the mango ribbon, right? The 10 kin, the 21, the 10 SMA, as well as the Kijun, that has given us some strong impulsive moves towards the upside. Correct. Yep. Yeah. So I think that that Kijun is really going to be the the determining factor here. And um, yeah, I mean, it's it's um it's a good picture. I, I mean, I mean, I mentioned this yesterday, right? Uh, the monthly close was great, but now it's like a sandwich. Yep. You know, we're sandwiched between that Kijun, that monthly Kijun, okay, and um, well, the the resistance that we just took out at around that nine thousand three hundred and fifty. Yeah. Right. So it's a it's a very tight sort of narrow zone that Bitcoin is all going to start oscillating in or rather is oscillating in on the monthly time frame. Exactly. So once we start closing candles above that monthly key June, right, and confirming another candle above it. So two candles, if you want to be safe, right, that's when you can say, you know what, I'm going to start looking for the big macro play until then. It's still a little bit um, prudent to be cautious. In fact, if you want to take it one step further, clear out everything on your mango ribbon mark out the candle close from the previous run that closed at around 10,800 and then mark out the candle close at um, the run, the parabolic run at 14,000, right? 13,900. Okay. Once we clear both of those on a monthly time frame, that's when you are sure, absolutely sure that we are going to much, much higher numbers, 20,000 for sure. And hey, perhaps even 50,000, right? We talked about that yeah. in yesterday's video. And um, Krisha, I also do have a symmetrical triangle drawn over here on my monthly time frame, right? Um, I did send you a screenshot of this earlier this morning. Yes. In fact, um, I'm just noticing now that the top of the symmetri symmetrical triangle, this major bull flag, potential bull flag, is lining up with hey 10,800 which yeah. lines up with what our monthly key June which lines up with what also well it lines up with the um, top of the monthly close of this major major consolidation over here so of the previous run rather 
Yeah. So yeah. a lot of confluence so, at 10,800, Krisha. I think I think there's a, there's a good picture, at least in terms of patterns. I mean, if you just look at that symmetrical triangle, Tron, and you kind of zoom out, now suddenly it's looking like one big bull flag, right? Yep. But right? Hey. <laughs> See? <laughs> Um, I mean, we're not going to get ahead of ourselves here. I mean, it's all still too premature until we actually have that break to the upside to really confirm that pattern play. But um, yesterday, Sean and I were actually talking about, um, you know, price and, um, you know, just the, the bull cycles and the bear cycles. Yeah. And um, yesterday I was telling him how, you know what, while we were doing our analysis, I sort of zoomed out of the chart. And um, if you notice that last, okay, now the previous bull, bull cycle, which mm -hmm. happened in uh, December of 2013, Sean, um, the, the highs of there was 1,115, so basically that 1K region, yep. right? And then as soon as we entered the bear market, the low of the bear market was 197-ish, uh, right? Yeah. Now, after that, we stepped in to a brand new bull cycle, right, Sean? Indeed. Indeed. And that is, that is the cycle in which we actually hit that 20K region. Exactly. So now, I'll... Sean, what was, what was the lowest point of our bear market? 3,319. Think about that. Okay, mm -hmm. the high of the last one was about 1,000. Mm -hmm. Okay, the low, the lowest point we got to this time was 3,000. Yeah. So if this actually gets into a bull market, Sean, I don't know. We may is... not see even 20,000 again is exactly. what you're trying to say, right? Yeah. yeah. Because the low of this bear cycle was still 3x of the high of the last bear cycle, exactly. last bull cycle. So exactly. That's, yeah, and if you do if you do mark out the monthly closes of each cycle, Krisha, you are seeing that once we took out that the previous cycle's high on a monthly basis, we've just skyrocketed to the top, right? So I have that marked on my chart right now. The high on a closing basis of the previous run was 13,900. So if everyone wants to be absolutely, um, take the safest trade, safest trade, we would be looking for monthly closes above 13,900, right? Which lines up with everything we've been discussing in in even yesterday's video, which was, hey, Bitcoin has not really closed monthly candles into that 11,000 range ever since this 20K mark, right? We said yeah. that, hey, Bitcoin has essentially used the 10,000 to 10,900 region as a value sell area, right? Yeah. Once we start seeing Bitcoin close above that 10,999, and if you want to be absolutely safe, like we just discussed, above 13,999, that's when we can be like, okay, the parabolic run is about to start for a long-term parabolic run <laughs> at the very least. And it will line up with a break of this bull flag, Krisha, this yes. flag that we're looking at right now. But it's not there just yet. We have resistance, a lot of resistance overhead, right? We talked about 10,900 Kijun. We talked about the top of the symmetrical triangle. We talked about even the top of this monthly candle close right over here at 10,850. So a lot of resistance. So no reason to get ahead of ourselves just yet. In fact, um, I did draw the symmetrical triangle on a weekly time frame. So I'm going to go ahead and switch on over to the weekly, Krisha. Mm -hmm. And I want to point out that, hey, we could still, we could very well still get rejected over here on, you know, weekly basis and make our way down towards the bottom of the symmetrical triangle. There's enough time. And the reason I'm showing the weekly chart over here is because the monthly makes, gives people the impression that, hey, it's going to happen soon, right? We're going to break soon. But if you look at the same symmetrical triangle on the weekly time frame, you're seeing that, hey, we have a lot of weeks to go, okay? We have a lot, yeah, we could break up over here, but at the same time, we could, easily spend another 26 weeks um, consolidating in this triangle coming perhaps to the bottom of the triangle perhaps to the center of the triangle around 6900 ish right i'd be looking yeah. at that to be honest if we'd see a rejection over here and then bounce back up right to the top of the triangle and then break 26 weeks we ha that's enough time to um um, wear people out and perhaps yeah. chop their Bitcoin to pieces. So be careful, guys. Be very careful and be prudent. You do not want to miss the real run that is to come. Exactly. It's just because a matter I think, of when. Um, as, yeah, it's a matter of when. And then, um, and just, you know, if you kind of draw parallels back to that previous sort of bear cycle, okay, to the one that we had all the way up to 20K, um, Sean, like, we didn't even get down to the highs, right, yep. at 1,000. So if you just wait on that confirmation, if you're looking for a sure, sure trade on Bitcoin, you can wait on that confirmation and it will still be okay if we are indeed getting into a bull cycle. Because yeah, there's a lot of upside to be had. There's no yes. reason to be rushing it, right? Yeah.
Okay, so we talked about the monthly, Kusha. We talked about um, the weekly too. Um, I do want to, there are a couple of other things I do want to talk about on the weekly, but we'll save that for tomorrow's video. Um, I want to switch on over to the two day time frame now because that's essentially where we are playing our trade off. And um, I'm going to switch to Bitstamp now off BLX. And uh, yeah, I just want to point out number one, we're going sideways pretty much. The past one, two, three candles have pretty much been in the same range of 9,800 to the top and around 9,650 to the bottom, all right? And hey, this is beginning to look more and more like a... Mm, more of a symmetrical triangle, I do think. We can mark out our ranges going all the way back to the 22nd of Feb, actually. We could use those candle highs right there, and we can use these candle bottoms right over here and say, hey, Bitcoin's pretty much going sideways. As long as it's trading within um, this range of 10,000 to the upside and 8,400 and... 50-ish, right? I think we can adjust yeah. that a little bit. Yeah. yeah, something around there. It's We're still consolidating. We could pretty much take trades off the top of the um, range over here, short around 9,800 to 10,000, and um, long the bottom around 8,500. You could draw a diagonal, which is completely valid, right? We do have higher lows. And now this looks like a really beautiful symmetrical triangle that could break to the upside, has a higher probability of breaking to the upside, but could break towards the downside. But Krisha, this okay. is getting awfully close to the end of the symmetrical triangle or the ascending <laughs> triangle over here. And you guys know how I feel about that. I'm not too comfortable playing these kind of consolidations. I like them breaking a little bit earlier. So if this spends any more time in this range over here, um, I'm likely going to be at the very least reducing my position size, taking the profits that I have accumulated in this range over here and just waiting for Bitcoin to make a... Um, decision on which direction it wants to go right if it does break to the upside i will unhedge whatever i de-risked and let the rest run if it does break towards a downside i will hedge or rather just get out of the entire position that i do have i do want to pull out now the ichimoku template if you guys have the mango ribbon you guys will be able to do this as well so, oh wow krisha wow um yeah, uh, going back to what I was saying, if you guys have the mango ribbon, just essentially turn off everything except the tank in the Kijun and turn on your cloud and you'll have essentially what I have over here. In fact, I'm going to turn off my 200 moving average. And I want to show you guys what I just noticed too, the bottom of the, or rather the rising trend line, right? This, the bottom of this um, ascending triangle is lining up perfectly with the two-day Tenkin. And the reason I pulled this up over here was because I was going to say that this Tenkin is going to be a decisive factor now because if we lose this Tenkin, if we lose this Tenkin on the two-day time frame, I do think that we would make our way down to that Kumo twist, Krisha, looking very, very ma magnetic, very magnetic, right? We have a yeah. C-SPAN trade now because the Tenkin is beginning to flatten out. The Kijun has been flat for a very long time. The top of the cloud is also flat and thinning out going into that Kumo twist. I do think we could make our way there if we lose that Tenkin. And remember, we are not bull tards, we are not bear tards. We are we want to make money tards over here <laughs> at the mango community. And it's always if this, then that. If we break 10,000 on a two-day time frame towards the upside, I'll remain bullish and hold on to my position. However, if we lose that 10 kin on the two-day time frame, which is lining up with the bottom of this ascending triangle, I do think we could make our way all the way down to 7.5, 6.9, right? Hey. It is a possibility, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and clear out all my drawings. I want to turn on the 21 EMA on the two-day, see where that lines up with. And hey, it's coming in right over there, Krisha. Right underneath the tank and lining up really well with that um, two-day ascending triangle we just drew. Mm, yeah, um, you know, um, Sean, I don't know if you're if you're noticing the Kijun, actually. So we may, and look at that C-SPAN trade, that potential C-SPAN trade, if we get underneath that 21 EMA as well as that Tenkin, right? Yeah. Breaking that, closing a candle underneath that is going to be the impetus of us actually having a, you know, not just breaking the triangle to the downside, but also having, um, you know, meeting that C-SPAN trade and also notice the Kumo twist, right? Exactly. That's essentially what um, I was just talking about, Krisha, the flattening of the top of the cloud as well as the Kijun. 
um, it's like, like I said, looking very, very magnetic. You know what? Um, I don't do this often on video, but let's go ahead and look at the oscillators. Let's see if we have any divergence that might also be lining up. Okay. So, okay. Stochastics are actually, I mean, uh, crossing towards the downside. Not confirmed just yet. I'd like to see this um, close um, another two-day candle and confirm this. So, not looking good over here. And by the way, you guys all who are on the Mango C program should have access to the uh, Mango Mother, which is essentially uh, a convenience indicator for a, the oscillator module as well as the RSI module. So yeah, please watch the module first. Watch the entire thing. I think it's around four and a half hours long. You will understand in a much, much deeper and effective way how to use oscillators, how to use divergences and a lot more, right? Okay. So now the question is, do we actually have bearish divergence over here on the two day time frame? And um, not really, you, you could make an argument for it because of these highs over here, but um, it's not as pronounced as I would like to see. And I do think that this has already spent way too much time between this point over here and this point. Mm, again, an argument could be made, an argument could be made, but it's not strong enough for me. What, what is what is um, concerning, however, are these stochastics over here that are crossing towards the downside. So I'll be keeping an eye on that. And um, yeah, this is turned from green back on over to neutral over here too. A lot of a lot of warning signs are beginning to show but hey we are simply going sideways too let's go ahead and look at the 12 hour stochastics and see what that's telling us over there and 12 hour stochastics also going sideways this is what we don't want as trend traders right we want to see some momentum and momentum right now while it's beginning to kind of flutter to the upside it's still going sideways for the most part and as a trend trader it's not what we want to see however looking at the 12 hour we do have some really really nice higher lows on this trend line and these high lows have been being maintained right once we start okay if we start losing 9127 if we even tick underneath there i can say you know what i it, that's good enough for me to start de-risking my position i'm not sure if i'm going to do that just yet so don't take my word on that but um yeah um it, it, it is time to to uh, keep an eye out, keep an eye on what things, how things are going to pan out or how things will unfold, Krisha, because I do think a big move is coming and it could be in either direction. And so I think we're going to have a tell though, Sean. Mm -hmm. I think we are going to have that first tell if this is going to start uh, looking bearish, okay? Um, and this is something actually going back to one of your videos um, and where you looked at that 9,600 region as a key, key yes, level. Yes, yes. Okay, guys, and I do level. believe that that is going to be the first tell. As soon as we start closing consecutive 12-hour candles underneath 9,600, mm -hmm. I don't know. Personally, I'm going to start tightening my stops. No, um, you have to keep... keep um, I, think, I think that is going to be your first tell if we start closing... 12 hour candles underneath 9,600. And Sean, I do believe that is also sort of very, very close to that 21 EMA. Okay, I do believe that that is going to be your first bearish tell, at which point I'll be looking for continuation to the downside. What are I'm, your thoughts on that? I'm pulling up the 21 EMA right now, actually. And yep, you are right. The 10 kin as well as the 21 EMA are both coming in right over there around that 9,550 ish, 9,600 region. So, again, that could be another um, early way to make a decision on exiting your trade or looking for a short um, all the way down to first 8,100, eventually down to 7,500, the two day Kumo twist, right? But yeah, the 10 and the 21 EMA on the daily are gonna prove vital now. On the two day, let's go ahead and see where's that coming in at. The two day, the 21 EMA and 10 coming at 9,300, but the 10 SMA that has been held for a very long time coming in at around that 9,450 region. So a lot of confluence and you're going to see a move soon because if Bitcoin starts blowing through towards the downside, it's going to be taking out a lot of resistances across multiple time frames. And by resistance over here, I mean support resistance towards the downside. And um, I think it's going to be triggering a lot of stops, also pulling in a lot of short traders who will be adding momentum and fuel towards a downside move. And by that logic, a break towards the upside over here is going to be very significant because the, we are talking about resistance lines over here that have lasted for a few years now, Krisha, years. We're yeah. talking about monthly closes that we've not seen since the, the 2017 bull run. So a big decision to be made on either side. There's Usually we like to go by the mantra, um, 
path to least resistance, right? Well, there's the path. There's resistance on both sides. There's resistance on both sides. So, it might be better to um, just just be cautious, guys. Be cautious. Yeah, this is this is the time where I would say, um, you know, keep a very very close eye out on the charts. Usually, I don't like doing that, but personally, guys, I will be looking at every twelve hour close. Uh, moving forward, um, at least for the next, uh, you know, couple of weeks until we actually have that big break. But this is coiling towards something big. But if there is a downward move, Sean, I'm actually looking at the two day occasion. And uh, even the measured move, like you had mentioned, comes all the way down there, right? 7,176. Yep. 7, if we're looking for targets, 7, that is. Yep. All right. So that's pretty much it for today's video, guys. We've gone over the monthly, the weekly, the two day. Talked about the 12 bar 2, the major level on the daily being 9,600. Upside targets are, well, crazy, crazy. If we actually manage to break um, towards the upside over here, if you're looking at the two day time frame, we're looking at a two day candle close above 10,050 ish. Um, if you want to be ultra safe, you could look for a two day candle above 10,300. That would pretty much confirm that we're likely going to make our way forward further and further up first target after that would be around 10,800 after that we're going to be looking at around 11,000 11,800 11,300 we'll be taking it step by step but hey if the monthly start closing into that 11,000 range well in that case 13,900 and after that 20,000 and after that 50,000 but hey a lot of resistance to through to chew through before we get there i hope you guys enjoyed this video my name is sean dexter and krisha and I hope you guys have a great day. Trade safely, trade stress-free, trade the mango way, trade the easy way, guys. Ciao.